Hello there. This is All About Messy Mats with Amanda Kulaba. Today I'm going to use two different projects to teach you about messy mats and here's what you will learn. First, we're going to talk about what is a messy mat. Then, we will talk about how to use messy mats. Next, we're going to talk about why we should use messy mats. And finally, we're going to talk about what to do with a dry messy mat. So what is a messy mat? A messy mat is a way to clean your brush without water. As you see me working in this video, you, I started with purple and then I switched to blue, but I did not wash my brush out. Blue and purple are so similar that you don't need water to go between the colors. But then I wanted to use this coral paint. And to be able to use that, I needed to get the blue and purple out of my brush without using water. So I go to my messy mat, which you can see on the right hand of the screen, and I just wipe the brush around until the paint is gone. Then when I'm ready, I can dip that same brush into that coral color and I can paint with it. And you really can't tell that I had blue and purple on that brush to begin with. Okay, so the messy mat is that sheet of paper that you can see on the right hand of the screen that I use when I'm trying to switch between colors of paint to wipe my brush on so that I get enough of the paint out of the bristles that I can move on to a new color. So let's just watch me use that messy mat for a few more seconds. Okay, now that you know what a messy mat is and you know a little bit about how to use one, let's talk about why these are great tools for art classes. Um, human beings have varied abilities when it comes to fine motor skills, especially young children, and when they go to squirt their own paint out, sometimes they squirt too much. As you can see, the palette that I have here has extra paint on it that I'm not going to need. Now, we could either throw that paint away or we could figure out how to use it. And a lot of times when I have my classes clean up, I will tell them to finish their messy mats. And so they will dip the extra paint up onto their brush and they will just smear it all over that messy mat. This is important for two reasons. The first reason this is so great is because you can use scrap paper or scratch paper to create messy mats with. So you don't have to waste that paper. Normally that paper ends up in the trash, but you can use it for a messy mat and keep it from ending up in the trash. And the other reason it's so great is you can't put that paint back in the bottle, so it keeps it from going in the trash as well. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some messy mats that some of my students made. These were made on copy paper that had stuff on the back of it, and you can tell it's already had holes punched in it, and we just didn't want to throw that copy paper away, so we made our messy mats on there. This messy mat was a sheet of free draw paper that someone had been using a hot pink crayon on and they didn't want it anymore and to keep it out of the trash I just made my messy mat right on top of it. You may be wondering what you can do with the messy mat once it dries. Well, here's an example. The background of this painting was a messy mat. You can see all the messy mat colors in the background and I just went right on top of it once it was dry and painted this lady's face. Another idea for using a dry, messy mat is to treat it like scrapbook paper. So for this project that I'm about to show you, I wanted to make a flower and I just pulled my messy mat and some random papers that I found lying around the studio. The first step here is to just kind of get some paint down on the white paper so that, the, that you have some color in the background. And I painted in a very quick, disorganized fashion to get this um, background it, it's going to be green and pink and with a little bit of purple mixed in. So you'll notice here I wasn't I didn't take a whole lot of care with exactly what kind of brush marks I was making I'm just trying to lay down some color and I added in a little bit of purple as the last little step just to get some light color in there. 
The next step is to start cutting out some leaves with the scrapbook paper and the messy matte paper. So I wanted to start with this black and white scrapbook paper that already has leaves on it, but I didn't want to actually cut out the leaves. So you will notice that I just cut the shape of a leaf. I didn't actually cut out the leaves that were on the paper. So I still keep that really great pattern, but I didn't have to cut out the leaves. And I'm just going to cut out a few more of those. And then I'm going to cut some out of the messy matte paper. Once I get about seven or eight leaves cut out, I'm going to kind of think about where they might look nice. And I'm not going to start gluing because I have to put them on there and see how I want them arranged. So I, li I tried it one way and I didn't like it. So I tried it another way and I tried it again until I found a way that I liked it. It's all about finding the right arrangement that suits you and is visually pleasing. The next step was to cut out a flower and I decided to use the black and white polka dots and the actual floral scrapbook paper that I had. So I started by cutting out a circle out of the black and white polka dots. Now, if you are not confident that you can cut out a circle without drawing it, then feel free to draw it. And it's the same with the leaves. Just always draw on the back of the paper and then cut it out. Nothing, no harm in having to draw it first. The more you do it though, the better you'll get. And then I decided I wanted a kind of a wavy shape for the flowers. And again, I did not cut out any specific flower that's on this paper. I just cut out a random wavy shape. I didn't worry about the shapes that are actually on the paper. And there you go. I have everything on that paper the way that I think looks great. And now I can start to glue. So here's the finished project once we added all the extra details in and we've used a little bit of gold leaf and some stamps to create this. And I want you not to forget the most important part is that those green leaves were once a messy mat. So to recap, messy mats are what we use to clean our brushes out when we don't have water. We also use messy mats to collect the extra paint that would normally end up in the trash can. And once it dries, we can use it to create artworks where we paint over the messy mat and we can also use that paper like scrapbook paper and cut it out to create collage and mixed media works. So I hope you learned a lot today. I was super excited to share this with you. I think messy mats are wonderful tools to use in the art room.